Uh, okay, start. Then we'll switch to English. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, it is so much uh, better to speak in Bulgarian. Anyway, we are not complaining. Uh, welcome to everybody who joined this session uh, that has the the big title "Navigating Through the Storm." We were just discussing here with uh, Zori Zornica <clears throat> Yankova. Uh, I will introduce her in a second. We were just discussing that. This is one of those storms that um, you actually you've never been in such a storm. So the rules for navigating, we are discovering them rather than you know playing by the book. Uh, so um, Zori Yankova is the <clears throat> senior HR uh, officer of Scale Focus, one of the largest IT companies in Bulgaria and all the Balkans. Um, I'm so delighted that she said yes to my invitation <laughs> to be. Uh, um, you know, to talk to me about leadership and navigating through the storm and all of that. So, Zori, thank you and welcome to the conversation. Thank you for the invite. <clears throat> um, and um, yes, my name is Misha Stefanov. Um, I I work in the fields of communication and leadership development, <clears throat> and um, I accepted the generous invitation from uh, the wonderful team of Trending Topics to host this uh, meeting and this session on leadership. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a big thing, it's a big, it's a big topic. It's such a crazy world, it's such a big storm that we're in. And um, I have one idea and we are really, we're really uh, in tune with, with uh, Zori on this, that uh, it is in times of crisis when we need leaders. Uh, it is exactly in times of crisis when we need leaders. So in the beginning of our conversation, um, Zori, if you allow me, I will spend 10 to 15 minutes outlining several key and I believe sort of forgotten leadership traits that I think are vital for the situation in which we are currently are. Uh, <clears throat> it is exactly, exactly in times of crisis when leadership is vital. <clears throat> uh, in, in the beginning of my career, even like in university, okay, somebody is complaining about the sound. Um, can you hear us, Penka? Hi, Penka. <clears throat> Let's see if anybody, if everybody can hear us. Yeah, can you hear us, guys? As well, yes. I can hear you very well. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Well, I will I will move on. And if guys, if you have any technical issues, <clears throat> you can absolutely ask either Alexandra or Irina uh, from the Trending Topics team who are in the chat. I believe they will be uh, following the chat. So I was saying that um, leadership is especially vital in times of crisis. Uh, in the beginning of uh, my career, even in university, I, I had a sort of a side gig as a mountain guide and I was leading groups in the mountains. And uh, I had several experiences. Uh, I had to lead groups in really, really strong summer storms. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever been to in, in the mountain during a storm. I know, Zori, that you are snowboarding uh, or skiing. I'm not sure. I, I just know that you love winter sports. Uh, but um, it, 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 in a summer storm, it comes suddenly. Sometimes you even see it coming. Um, I will never forget. I was walking on a on a slope on the on the in the Balkan Mountains, and you could see the storm coming down on the slope. And in like in ten minutes, you're just in the middle of the storm. But you could see it like it was coming, and there was nothing you could do. You you were absolutely powerless. And um, it, it's really interesting because <clears throat> the good guide, the good leader uh, is especially visible in the storm. Because when everything is fine, yeah, we, we, we all walk the direction, we all see the signs. But when the storm hits, it is then when good leaders tend to, you know, to be most visible. And bad, bad leaders are also really, really visible. <clears throat> and um, I think there are, really, there are three key things that separate the good leaders from the sort of weak leaders during 
storms. Uh, <clears throat> and first of those, I don't have slides. I just wrote with the pink marker of my daughters. Uh, the first one is humility. And um, you'll probably be surprised by this. Mm, I don't know if, uh, if you have given a thought about that, but um, humility for me is the most forgotten and the most neglected vital characteristic of leadership. We almost never speak about it as if humility is something that is bad or wrong, as if being humble means being weak. We are often afraid to speak about humility because we sort of correlate it to weakness. And uh, yeah, humble leaders, they are weak leaders. We need charismatic leaders. We need strong leaders. We need even authoritarian leaders. <clears throat> but in my opinion, this is completely wrong because um, humility is a vital characteristic of good leadership, especially in times of uncertainty. Because in times of uncertainty, and we, we see this even on political level, although I will not go there, but um, we see, we see on, 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 in times of uncertainty, we see that if you cannot say that you have made a mistake, which is a, a sign of humility, it is really, really bad because things change all the time. And you can never, you can never pretend that you know everything, especially in times of crisis. When everything's fine, you can say, yeah, I know how things are done. But now nobody does. So it takes some humility to say, hey, I don't know everything. It takes some humility to ask others for their opinion, for their understanding, to seek a common or a mutual way of dealing with the crisis. It takes some humility to understand that you cannot control everything and to accept it because uh, most of the of the leaders i've worked with they're leaders but they have this strong sense of control they really want to control the situation they want to control the 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 the, the, the company they want to control the employees they want to control everything and now control is slipping through our fingers we cannot control and it takes humility to accept that it takes humility to react instead of dominate the situation because obviously we are being dominated <laughs> and this is a characteristic of the storm it dominates you you cannot dominate over a storm you survive a storm you walk through the storm you find the way through the storm you don't dominate the storm it's this it's the same i think it's the same characteristic of the situation so humility is is, is a big big thing being able to say, hey, guys, I don't know, but we have to figure it out together. And this together is the second big thing, and that's empathy. I think the second, the second characteristic of leaders that are going to take us through this storm, through this crisis, is empathy. Uh, and when I say empathy, I mean a simple, simple, simple thing, caring for those around you. When I say caring, this means um, from are they well, doing the best I can to support them. And empathy is key, trying to figure out how someone else feels. Uh, put yourself in someone else's shoes. In Bulgarian, we say put yourself in someone else's place. You know, look the world from their perspective. As my good friend, uh, Dr. David Ryback, who was in Bulgaria end of last year, uh, <clears throat> uh, he, he, he's a, a world expert on emotional intelligence. And the way he described empathy was seeing the world through someone else's eyes. And I know this sounds really poetic and blah, blah, and nonsense. But let me tell you, when you, when you walk through the storm, now Anna Zori is laughing. I mean, we're all working with, with strong managers who are all about the bottom line. You know, we want to see numbers. We want to see the financial results. Don't talk to me about empathy. Don't talk to me about, uh, you know, touchy feelings and all of that. Business is rational, no, but that's not true. Business is done by people. And people, in order to build trust, 
you know, there are three characteristics of successful teams, and I believe with Zori we will go there uh, from one angle or another, but there are three characteristics of really successful teams and international studies such as Google Aristotle Project and Harvard, uh, big study on team emotional intelligence, they prove that it's trust, identity, and efficacy. If a team has those three, you have an effective team. So you cannot have trust without an empathetic leader. You cannot have identity without empathy. You cannot have efficacy <clears throat> without empathy. So empathy is a key characteristic. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really disappointed by some uh, even big companies. It is obvious that they can afford to save their employees. It is obvious that they can afford to shield them from the crisis. But what I witness, sadly, is people being laid out right away. And uh, <clears throat> right away. And this is this is awful because you, you've worked with those companies. You know, I, I don't want to blame. I don't want to judge. But it is empathy that we need because it is tragic to lay off the people when you have the resources to support them at least for some time. Because after the crisis, they will not be available. And you are losing investments. People are his investment. They're the most valuable asset that we have. So empathy is, um, is not only touchy-feely thing. It is vital for the business survival. This is my thesis. It, it is, if you don't invest in people, <clears throat> it, it is over. It's game over. And I currently have several friends that are being really good professionals. They have served their organizations well for five, 10 years, and they were laid off with the first signs of crisis, uh, but they were laid off without the need for that. And the company said, hey, we're gonna call you in three months, in five months, you know. This is not how things work. Empathy means the leader is able to sacrifice and to suffer together with his people. Of course, if we cannot allow, afford to keep people, that's one thing. And this is really sad and it's something that we cannot. But even in the way we lay people off, empathy makes all the difference, you know, understanding. <clears throat> so this is the, the second point that I want to make. Besides humility, leaders need empathy, understanding of the other perspective. And the, the third one that I really think it's, it's, it, it's key it's called, just a second, let me write it down. It's called mental flexibility. Mental flexibility is the, is the ability of a leader for two things. It's a, unique, it's a unique capacity or a new skill of the brain. It is gaining new information, so being a constant learner, but at the same time, using this information effectively, me combining the information that you learn in a new way. So this is mental flexibility, being able to change the direction every day. And we were talking with Zori um, just before uh, we started, and uh, she said, things change by the hour. And I will ask her about that, you know, because this is mental flexibility. You know, this is this is what it takes. And one of the one of the things that I see in companies is as soon as the crisis hit, they stopped learning. They stopped all kinds of training their people. And I think this is this is a critical mistake. And now you 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 may say, yeah, this is the guy, I mean. Misho is a guy that makes money from trainings. Obviously, he hates it when companies cut down trainings. And I hear the point in that. I don't like it. <laughs> you know, I don't really like it. But even if you don't hire Misho, even if you don't hire, you know, anybody, don't stop learning. Because it is exactly in the times of crisis when learning combined with innovation activities then you need to boost that to the maximum. And during the previous crisis, actually, my team and I, we wrote about a 50-page uh, 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 book. It's like a small book even. Uh, a huge research on the effect of the last crisis 
on the business. And you know, guys, what turned out? It turned out that those companies who invested in learning during the last crisis emerged victorious. And we have whole countries such as Germany, uh, even the United States, they cut down on trainings during the last crisis. Opposed to that, the Asian markets, they invested heavily in trainings during the last crisis. And we know what happened after the last crisis. We saw stagnation in Europe. We saw shrinking of business, but we saw a, a fast emerge of the, of the Asian markets. And uh, this was a result. And it's, there are several factors, but one of the most influential factors, according to international analysis in this is, is, the, is the investment in learning during the crisis, because during the crisis, and Zori is going to tell us about this, she has some really interesting thoughts. You need to create new models for everything. In order to create new models, you need new knowledge and you need new, new interpretation of that knowledge. You need new understanding and new application of the knowledge. So mental flexibility is the third. So here, talk. So the first one is humility, being able to say, I don't know, being able to ask for advice. The second one is empathy, caring for the people around you, for your team, because this is, these are the people that are going to take you through the crisis. And, you know, being a mountain guide, you're not a successful guide in the mountain. You're not a successful leader if 85% of your group reaches the final destination, you know? Yeah, it was 35 people, but 32 made it alive. You know, we lost only 10% of the people, you know? That's not how it works in the mountain, even in storms, you know? So I don't believe, I don't believe, it, uh, <clears throat> I don't believe it, it, it works the, the differently for companies, empathy. And the third one is mental flexibility. We need new knowledge, new models, innovation so we need to to keep on learning and keep on doing stuff so this is where i stop thank you for this my goal was to set a frame for the conversation but i'm really more interested in hearing zori's voice and zori's thoughts rather than hearing my own <laughs> because i spend with myself you know rather most of the most of the day unfortunately so <laughs> zori with this um i would like to you know give you the floor uh, and uh, <clears throat> I have several questions that I have prepared for you. Okay. Uh, I have several things that I really want to know um, okay. and to hear your thoughts on that. And um, I believe the people will benefit greatly from what you bring to the table. Uh, so my first question, Zori, is uh, about, I don't know, about two weeks into the crisis, the company you currently work for and you actually recently joined, Scale yeah. Focus, did something incredible. Uh, in only two weeks, your team designed an amazing app called Virusafe. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, and this app was is just outstanding. It immediately became part of the national mechanism for dealing mm -hmm. with the COVID situation. And it's an amazing app. Like we, you, we can probably spend the whole time talking about the app. But what I'm interested in, why? What was what was behind in the kitchen, in the leadership kitchen? You know, how did you decide to do this? Why why did you, the leaders of that company, um, decide to invest all the effort, all the money, all the people hours into doing something like that? Because this is not a usual response to crisis and it is really interesting the, the leadership thinking behind that decision um yeah thank you thank you for for this question it's a kind of an unexpected question to talk about very safe um what happened was i i think when when the crisis Came, I think it was very unexpected, right, for everyone. And uh, one of the big things was how do we act internally, but also how do we act externally? And I think one of the big, big things that came to mind was is there something that we can do externally outside of scale focus? And I think um, it was around making sure that we we wanted to support in some way. We realized it's a 
critical time for everyone in the country. It's obviously, um, you know, unprecedented crisis. So for, I think very early on, we realized that um, we wanted to do something and um, there was probably something we can do. And we actually said, how we can do it. I think the question to the government was, what do you need us to do? So we kind of offered resources because it, it just made sense, right? Um, but it is um, a pro bono project. It is at the same time with dedicated resource. So people probably know it was, you know, the code is now open. So it's, it's something everyone can, can, can take and use as, as they need in all other countries to, to leverage. But basically, one of the big things was, is this important? Do we see value in it? Um, how can we support what we can do? And then it was around, how do we make sure we do it super quickly and, um, and, and, and you know, provide um, the solution in a way that we have the, the focus, the, the commitment, um, and I think um, I, I would say dedication. People literally worked, you know, day and night. So it was, how do we ensure it's the right thing? What do we focus on? And how do we make sure it's also a priority for people? So very, very early on, we had a project manager. We had someone owning there, someone who was committed to delivering on time, and so on. So. I think this was the, the discussion. We actually didn't have, it, it, it came as a proposal from one of the members of the executive team, but there was no question, should we do it? It was more, how do we do it in a way that it makes sense, right? So it was, um, I think, a very quick, very fast, and timing in crisis, I think, is critical. I think you cannot just, wait for the perfect solution right you can you, you don't have the luxury of time you don't have the the luxury of oh let's um you know really think it through design it make sure it's perfect you don't have that so it was like what's the optimal thing we can do you know obviously dedicate resources have someone lead it have the right person lead it with the right mindset the right attitude given the project and then it was um hard work i guess <laughs> and a lot of a lot of focus <clears throat> thank you very much uh, i i have several questions on what you said um but just one before i uh, everything that i wrote down before i go there uh usually the usual reaction mm -hmm. it's to uh, uh, reaction of turtles in crisis <laughs> you know we, we mm -hmm. sort of withdraw we go into survival mode so it is really mm -hmm. interesting for me this sort of um strategical empathy you, people would call it social responsibility but it, it, this idea uh is is this part of the company's culture you know to to because you didn't you didn't go into survival mode you invested heavily into something that did not bring profit into something that did not bring um you know direct uh bottom line for the company tell me um, about the rest of that. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah we actually have a team that is dedicated working on problem projects okay. i was very to an extent surprised to see that because as you rightfully say it's um it's a, an investment of people resources money um and i think the the big thing um here is that we are actually bringing in knowledge so something that is more or less specific to the company and that we could easily leverage from but at the same time implement fast i think you know we've had those discussions as any other company we do receive a lot of um, requests for support including financial support but the last months and i do believe this was the case before i joined as well so it's not something you know uh, yeah. that's that's recent they they've heavily we've heavily invested into um i would say knowledge 
and where we can implement what we know, what we do best, where we are good at, where we are strong into, into bringing immediate value. Um, we are reluctant to investing into purely financial initiatives where you mm -hmm. can see the outcome of it. But yeah. here, you know, you work on something, you you um, you you see the immediate effect of what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, and it also has massive impact. So for us, this was, I think, the, um, what was the decision making point? Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. One more question on that, and we'll move on. But sure. uh, <clears throat> one of the things you said really interested me. You said we were looking for the right person with the right attitude to manage the pro and i, I want to ask about what, what does right person and right attitude mean uh, in terms of yes. it sounds like that <laughs> yes i think there is a big difference between um what is required and you and i had this uh, discussion earlier you know um in the year between what is um the right attitudes and you know profile of leaders in crisis versus business as usual i think there is huge difference um and i also think to an extent um crisis is very similar to um and, and the attitudes and the behaviors required um are very similar to what you need in times of um change in general so there is a, a very strong connection between crisis management and change management and i think there is um in terms of quality um we needed someone to be fast meaning to have this sense of urgency and making sure that they prioritize well also needed someone who is i would say um decisive uh someone who is more or less i would say bold but at the same time someone who can bring innovation um hear to ideas of people listen to people connect people make sure that the team gets the purpose and their focus but at the same time they act as a team with the same sense of urgency very um different from business as usual situation so i think mm -hmm. this um situation now is basically requiring for all of us to uh, act different differently try new approaches you know I, I think life is different business reality is different and what we expect from people leaders is also different and when it comes to um you know the project itself but you know i, I would say this is in business environment in general it is very different from what we've seen earlier this year, demanding, um, uh, very fast, uh, very dynamic. And, you know, I think people are definitely required to use um, different, I would say, attitudes and, and mm -hmm. I, I would not say about skills, but more competences. Uh, I would like to meet that person. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the person you found that's really impressive. <laughs> well, you uh, do you know, your best, right? You do your best. Uh, yes. <laughs> there are some, uh, some some compromises you need to make at some point of time, but yes, I think it's around key key characteristics, right? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Zori, you have led the HR teams in some of the largest IT organizations in Bulgaria. We met while you were still at uh, HPE. And I believe you, you've seen some of the best and some of the worst leaders. Um, so you already started, you sort of scratched on that, but uh, can you tell us about both? What makes a good leader and what makes a, a weak leader, let's say a weak leader, not a bad, but a weak one? That's a big question. <laughs> yeah, it is. There are several, several thousand pages written on it, but you have to do it in like five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I think um, when it comes to, indeed, I, I've worked with a lot of people and um, people leaders, and I think it is, um, to an extent, 
you mentioned the IT industry and it's been growing very rapidly and I think growth um, comes with um, with its own challenges right so uh, it is very different as an industry and it requires a different um, uh, approach to how you solve things so mm -hmm. if I think um, one is um, there is no one size fits all right so uh, there is no the ideal profile of of, of the yeah. best yeah. right so okay. um different great leaders are uh great because of various reasons right um so some people are very good into connecting people into empowering people into developing people into making sure that they basically you know take the most out of um, of what the potential of people is uh, it's around connectivity it's around you know um, supporting people into achieving let's say what all their potential is what they could become um getting better and better into everything so i think you know empowering developing people is definitely one of the things that i would um i would put um also in terms of something that you've mentioned which is around um, early on in your intro which is around trust i, I do believe it's around trusting people trusting that your people will do their best and then trusting them and allowing them to do it so it's also around you know that um spirit of uh, partnership i would say uh, working with peers with your teams with your uh, you know management with uh, people leaders that you work with i think it's uh, being uh, honest and open i think you've mentioned that uh, around humility i do believe um some years ago um hp actually introduced um uh, being humble as one of the of the values and i think it made a huge impression being in a delivery business in an it delivery where you know literally everything is 24 7 uh, you know all year round so it's it it gave a very different angle of what we as a company expect from from yeah. people, people yeah. but i think it is also around um i would say uh, it's linked with something else which is around respect i think mm. uh, you know uh, it is allowing other people's point of view leveraging from that leveraging from experience respecting different views all the topic of inclusiveness you know and making sure that you have different people diverse teams and so on so this is definitely something that i've seen in really good people leaders mm. um as simple as you know listening to people um uh, letting them time letting them um the ability the, the the opportunity to communicate to you know to connect to you to um to express themselves you know i think uh, this is uh, this is very very uh, you know um you've mentioned you've mentioned charisma i only partially agree with that because i do believe um um, and I've seen on the worst example of very charismatic people doing really bad <laughs> leadership. So I would say it's also around, you know, um, a personality, but it is um, mainly, I would say, around. And I've had a lot of colleagues I worked with that are really good into um, transformation changes making sure that they they kind of bring the the team the organization the function to a different level um uh, and and it has to do with you know with um, really setting the bar high i think it's also around mm -hmm. uh, that genuine willingness and, and and strive and push i would even say for excellence i mean if you if you expect people to do their best, 
and you act yourself. I mean, being being also an example, I think it's around. Yeah, yeah. Um, people always say, you know, lead by example, you know, <laughs> walk the talk and all that. I, I do believe that people who do what they say, um, they're very powerful leaders. Mm, mm, integrity yeah perfect uh <clears throat> sorry we were talking before this conversation started and i have several more things that i will ask you in, in a bit but um something that comes to my mind now is um what are you thinking about now like what are the big processes what are the big things that you in in scale focus and you personally as a leader as a manager what are the big things that you understand need to be changed now in this situation <laughs> what do we need to change like because you see you mentioned several things that only one of them could scare you know the heck off of me and it's just and you said five of them you know so just mm -hmm. elaborate on that please yes. what, what should we change as we were as we were getting ready for the for the talk uh, I, I think that new business reality well i think there are various various things that are happening right now and um for all of us, it's um, life is very different. Like uh, I think um, one is when we talked you and I about, let's say, the crisis and what is happening. You know, I I I did I did not see the crisis coming, right? <laughs> and I didn't, uh, and and definitely definitely not in the way it it itself, right? So. Um, I think everyone was talking about, oh, there might be a new crisis coming, but everyone was kind of assuming it will just hit one um, industry, one area, one region, one something. But now this thing is so huge um, yeah. and it's unprecedented. Um, even for those of us who, who've, who've been through the last crisis, this thing now is, is different. Um, and I think um, when it comes to uh, what my thoughts are, I think um, there is this daily almost challenge around, are you still relevant? Is this, so the, the models, the, 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 the approaches, what, you've, what, what you're used to do, even you know, the best practices from before, what other companies been doing, is this still relevant? And I think one of my biggest challenges, um, and it is not specific to the company I work for, I think it's valid for almost uh, everyone and, and all the companies is, what is the business? What is the, the, the model? What is the economy going to, to evolve into? Because obviously, mm. you know, it will be different. Um, and I, I, I read yesterday into something that, Someone was saying, um, I don't think we should go back to what was before. To normal. To normal, normal yeah. Because it would be a lesson, uh, um, not a lesson learned, a lesson, a lesson missed, right? And I agree yeah, with yeah. that. I think um, we need to challenge ourselves into uh, bigger questions, which are how is business going to look like? economy going to look like what is our own business reality going to look like and then me as a leader into that environment what do i need to do am i still relevant with my skill set is there something that i've been doing that is now completely obsolete and i need to bring other skills is yeah. there something that i need to do more or do differently so um just as an example when you were we were talking about speed i think we need to be super fast super adaptive super flexible and it is not who we are as a uh, as a mentality as a cultural <laughs> i think yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know how we are built and then the other the other aspect is uh it is a significant change so we i literally have to scratch of everything I've been, you know, planning for, designing for, thinking of, um, and reset, and see whether I'm still, you know, looking at the right direction, and uh, what are the yeah. the answers to the questions. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, what what I'm when when I listen to you and I'm thinking, my God, if I suddenly realize that there there is one or two skills missing mm -hmm. from my leadership toolbox, how do you acquire this fast? I mean, it's crazy. Like mm -hmm. you don't you don't do it overnight. I mean, the crisis came overnight, but you don't. So my probably my my big question for you is what is the what is the lesson we need to learn what is the lesson we need to we need to you know not miss that's a million dollar question how do i know <laughs> um well uh i think it is about um i'm I'm reluctant to use the word because everybody's using this word. Um, it's innovation. It's around how do you do things differently? Um, and I think what the essence of it is, is, is growth. And, and you've asked me around, um, you know, how do you, how do you change and the skills? I think, um, you obviously cannot change overnight. And, and then there is the other the added component, which is you don't necessarily learn by training, right? So there yeah, is yeah. there is a lot that that goes with it. So we need to be fast into changing, but then what do we change to? That's one. And second is how do we change? Um, so it is also around adaptability, I think, and seeing the essence of things and opportunities, even if they're not very obvious. I think that's one of the, mm -hmm. the topics. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, in the mountain, because I'm using this analogy, yes. uh, obviously, uh, <clears throat> but uh, one of the things that's really vital there you you can you you probably can imagine because you're a mountain person you go there you you ski you like yeah. you and i don't know if you've noticed how many uh, are there really 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 close to the huts or to the to you know to where actually salvation was and there are people who died like literally i don't know 100 meters from where they were about to be saved Yes. You know, <clears throat> so uh, one of the things that um, I think is really vital as an attitude, and I would like to hear your thoughts about that, um, is if you you need we we need to stop thinking about become going back to normal, but not only because we will miss the lesson, but if we want to survive, we need to stop thinking about this because yes. in the mountain, if if you if you think all the time that you have little left, you, you know. 20 minutes and you'll be saved. Then you die because obviously it's a disappointment after disappointment. You know, it's not coming. But if you go into into survival mode, mm -hmm. you have a, a bigger, if you, if you say, yeah, nobody's going to come rescue me. What do I do then? Mm -hmm. You know, this is not going to go. What do I do? How do I live with it? Mm -hmm. I think this is something that we really lack as a mentality. But I think it is vital for our, for our, just accepting the fact that you know storm is not going away, or after, even if it, even if after it goes away, it, everything is going to look different. The landscape, the like every, so just accept. Uh, you broke for me for the last two sentences. I don't know if it's um, something with my, my connection or it's for everyone, but I didn't well, hear no, it. My, my, can, you, can you hear me now? Can you hear me yes. now? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So my question was, how do we get rid of that mentality? You know, salvation is near. It is going to be over soon. You know, and we just sit and wait for it to be over. What if it, what if it is not over, you know? What if it doesn't end in the next five years? What happens then? How do we live? <clears throat> How do we yeah. change that in our heads? <clears throat> you know, I think it's um, it's a valid question, and at the same time, it's um, it's it's a hard answer. I think 
one of the big, big, you know, lessons, especially in the past, I would say four or five years, but this crisis included, is that literally every day is different and change is inevitable, right? So one of the my personal lessons learned um, uh, is around the fact that it's really <coughs> reality is changing. Reality is changing every day, every week, every month. Um, you need to look forward, but you need to look forward without fear, right? So there is a lot of people who are kind of when are we going back to normal? When are we going back to security? And I think security is obviously not given, <laughs> but is now even, even more away, right? So in this specific um, situation, one is our new reality is going to change. Uh, constantly in the coming months and i would even say years so a year from now we will be in a very different place and the only thing that we can develop as mindset is accepting change accepting the fact that um, we will be required to uh, learn growth develop different skills or competencies you know um, mm. apply different um of the strengths that we have to be successful because at the end of the day one of the one of the challenges is again making sure that you are relevant and making sure that you more or less um find meaningful solutions to the problems that will occur and occur every day i think now this this situation is is very specific again day by day things change whatever we've been talking about three months from now two months from now mm -hmm. uh you know um is no longer applicable so it is around making sure that you ask yourself questions and you stay as alert as possible yeah and you keep track of the change and you keep yourself ahead to what's coming i think the big the to an extent the big thing is forward looking instead of past looking yeah. um, and it is making sure that you you develop what is required yeah if i can quote um a classical philosopher namely the fish named dory from finding <laughs> Nemo. Just she keep said, swimming. <laughs> just keep swimming. Yes. Yes. So what I heard from you in a nutshell <laughs> is just keep swimming. Zori, thank you. Um, sure. We are moving towards the end. I have so many things that you said and I want to, you know, I want to look into our mind more uh, and we can talk about fear and like, I, I believe you have so many you know things to say about these things but uh <clears throat> unfortunately we cannot go there because you know we don't have the the rest of the day and the rest of the week um you were asking me questions the last time we were in similar environment we had our roles exchanged so you were asking me questions and after that when we met um i shared with a colleague of mine and a friend of mine from hpe team a people manager there that I'm about to meet you. And she said, um, oh, Zori knows her stuff. Zori, Zori leads her people well. And she even shared how um, she even shared how you helped her. It doesn't matter who she is. You know, you have to you know, take my word for that. But um, okay. uh, you, helped, you helped her in her career growth uh, mm -hmm. without being her direct supervisor. Mm -hmm. So what is your secret ingredient for leadership? Because it looks to me that even people outside of your teams respect you and they love, they, they would follow you gladly. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thanks for, for sharing that. Well, you know, 
throughout my career, I've been really blessed uh, working with great leaders um, and great organizations. And I think, you know, uh, one is I'm, I'm I'm still connected with many of them, and uh, some of uh, some of those people turned into you know personal friends and uh, you know lifelong I would say connections. Um, I think if there is one secret ingredient, <laughs> it is being authentic. I talk a lot about, you know, authentic leadership. Um, and at the same time, you know, this has some very, very practical implications. You know, um, I very often say that I say I work with and people. Um, and I think I'm successful in, in what I do uh, because of the work of, of my team. So I think it is, I, I treat people the way, the way I'd like to be treated. We talked about, you know, trust and respect and, um, you know, um, values and um, communication. I, I actually enjoy a lot working with people. <laughs> I enjoy the, the, the collaboration. I enjoy the, the connection the, and the partnership working on challenges and projects together um i am i think um very straightforward i'm very open i'm very honest um i set the bar high um and i actually expect people to do their best i insist on receiving their best <laughs> mm -hmm. so it is um I really care about people development. This was something that uh, you and I mentioned early on. It's around seeing the potential of people and uh, supporting them into achieving that potential. Yeah. Um, so I would say mm, yeah. most probably people would say about me that I'm focused on mentoring a lot. Um, and it is around uh, caring for people i think uh, i do want them to be successful i want them to achieve what they're capable of but ultimately it does come to uh as i said being being authentic being who you are and um mm. people trust the fact that i'm acting very um uh, honestly in my interactions with them, I think this is one of the big things. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we are about to wrap things up now. Um, we have five more minutes or so left in the conversation. Uh, so guys, um, if you have any questions that you want to ask Zori or me, uh, please do so in, in the chat now. We are open to receiving your questions or well, let's spend the next 10 minutes or the last 10 minutes of uh, in discussion. Uh, so if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask Zori, please do so now. We are reading the chat as we speak. <laughs> anything that you'd like to, yeah, it's like anytime you teach and you say to the students, okay, who has questions? Everybody's, ah, I don't have questions, you know. <laughs> Okay, if, if there is anything that you disagreed with, please, you can share it here without fear of repercussions. You know, it's going to be okay. You can disagree with us freely. Okay, so you agree with every... So, sorry, we were so very clear. <laughs> as, as they say, you know, if, uh, if nobody's asking questions, they, they either fully agree or completely disagree with you <laughs> or sorry they are asleep that's the third option that's also another option <laughs> i hope they are not <laughs> okay so um thank you sorry for this wonderful conversation it was really really um it was such a such, such a privilege for me to to you know to have an hour of your time and just talk about leadership and talk about moving forward if i if i can wrap what i heard from you and then i would ask for your final thought um is i heard that navigating through the storm especially a storm like this is is for you is moving forward focusing on moving focusing on the forward 
together because you said the word connection. I don't know. I wrote it down like like ten times. I don't know. You probably yeah. ten times. Yeah. So I, I can hear that this is pretty big on your agenda. So I'd say moving forward together in a really really flexible mindset that things are never going to be the same and we need to be together we need to move forward we need to press and be and innovate as as you know as much as we can while at the same time caring for the people that we walk with that we try to deal with so this is what i heard in a nutshell from you and i will leave the honor of the final word to you the final words will be that, uh, in my experience, uh, I do believe massive changes, big transformations are actually the best learning moment. It's very intense, it's very intense, but it brings you to a completely different level in no time so it's been amazing speed so i've uh, i've been to transformations and uh, uh every time you close a project like this you turn around and you realize that you've learned so much you've personally professionally grown so much um and and it the 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 experience that you you get from such times is um is unprecedented so my only advice would be uh enjoy to the fullest <laughs> because it's a it's a big uh, moment of our life and our career and it's a fantastic fantastic opportunity mm. thank you very much to zurnice jankova um misha stefanov thank you very much for um oh somebody said they really enjoyed you Zori. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> it's a chat, so being chatty is a good thing here. <laughs> thank you, Penka. Thank you, Mincho. Thank you, Alexia, and, and to all the other people who joined in this discussion. I hope it was uh, it was useful, and I hope you were able to take something that inspired you, or you know, at least made you think. Uh, and I thank to the wonderful guys from Trending Topics for organizing this wonderful event. It's such a huge effort, guys. And I believe it's so much. It, it did so much for the for all of us, like for the environment, for the people, for the business. Thank you to Alex and Irina and their whole team. And um, with this, I say goodbye and uh, stay with the event. There are so many good lectures to come. Zori, thank you again. Sure. Uh, and I believe we'll be able to drink a cup of coffee together soon. <laughs> goodbye, you. everybody. Thank you.